Hello and welcome everyone to another InventRight.com TV show. Check out InventRight.com, click on coaching, learn more about our coaching and mentoring program. Steven, what's the topic today? Okay, you guys, real simple. Um, I want to talk about the first step that every inventor should take. If you miss this first step, you're going to fall off the ledge and you're, you're going to hurt yourself and your product's never going to come to market Whoa. and you're going to be sad. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be, be sad. There's gonna there's gonna be gonna, serious you're gonna be consequences. Heartbroken. <laughs> you're gonna be all those things. So I want to talk about the first step. Now, this first step, uh, you know, I've written about it. Andrew and I have taught classes in it. We help our students with this first step because if you miss it, it's a long fall if you miss this first step. And the first step is study the marketplace. Yeah, it sounds it very is. exciting. It's really too. exciting. It's riveting. Okay, it's, cool. It's, it's really what I like to do at the very beginning of the whole process. I like to go out and study the category that I'm, I want to invent in. I want to know all the players. Mm -hmm. I want to look at all the products that are out there. I want to be an expert in my micro category. Yeah, when Steven says all, he doesn't mean all. He means what he just said later. He said the micro category because it would be overwhelming. Well, so if, if you had a barbecue product, Steve, and to study all the barbecue products would be overwhelmed, but if you had a barbecue spatula, you could study barbecue spatulas in like four hours and become an expert how? in that Explain how to do that, Andrew. Everybody would love to know how to do that. The, the easiest, the, the, and oh, well, of course, Steve, the first thing you do is a patent search. Now, no, you do, it's not the first thing you do. He's That's what a lot of people he's think. He's testing so me. Go on, That's go, not the first thing. It, no, no, yeah, right. We do the 15 years like you don't know. Um, you're going to go on Google Images. And if you typed in barbecue spatula, you'll see all these pictures of all these barbecue spatulas. you see the price points. You'll see the benefits. One has a bottle opener on it. One has this scraper on it. You become an expert in that micro category. And you could do that on Google Images in about four hours. And you will find stuff on Google Images that you will not when you do a regular Google search. Now, you still have to come up with some different keywords. And maybe there, if it, barbecue spatula is pretty much barbecue spatula, but maybe there's another word for the product. Barbecue maybe accessories, barbecue, get, barbecue tools, flipping burgers. Barbecue kits, okay. you know. All right. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so you see all these pictures and inventors, you, I, Stephen, we're all very visual. So you see all these pictures of these barbecue spatulas, and they can click through it anywhere. They might click through to a blog might click through to a place where the product's being sold. Um, you don't know where these images are coming from, but it's amazing. Okay. It's so, so much why, better than regular Why is Google. that important, Andrew? It's important that you understand, well, a lot of people think, I'm just trying to prove, I'm trying to prove to myself that nothing like it exists. And that's not what you're trying to prove at all. What you're trying to do is say, how does my product fit in to the marketplace? Steven said, study the marketplace, all these other products that are out there. So this, this goal of going, I'm unique, I'm special, my product's great, there's nothing like it, that's wrong mindset, totally wrong mindset. How does mine fit into these? And you might go, oh, well, I could tweak mine to fit in a little better here or there or move over here because there's these five products here and these three products here. Or you might find. Like, I always give this example, right, Stephen? You have a barbecue spatula with a bottle opener on it, right? You thought there was nothing like it. And you notice there's eight of them out there. And most people's reaction is, oh, damn, somebody did it. Ah, oh, moving on. I'm so disappointed. Or I don't know if I can do this inventing thing. But you should actually be encouraged by it. There's eight barbecue spatulas with bottle openers. I know they're selling. I have a barbecue spatula with a bottle opener. And mine works a little bit different. Just a little tweak difference. So, you're not trying to prove there's nothing like it. And if you find things somewhat like it, that's a good thing. Now, you'll, sometimes you'll find things, there's can nothing I, like it, okay? There's nothing can, quite can like it. Can I talk? Okay. Yeah. You're, yes. You're also doing, you're <laughs> trying to find your point of difference. Andrew's right. You're trying to find your uniqueness. But it's okay if you find similar mm. ideas. That's, that's telling you there's a market for it. That's actually a good thing. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I'm really, Steve was the one that said we got to do this topic. Because this is at the very beginning, when the second you have a thought, okay, this so, is what you should be doing. So nothing what, else, right, okay. Steve? Is that true? So, nothing else. You don't do anything else. Okay. That's the first so thing you do, wait right? Minute, wait a minute. What are some of the other <laughs> benefits, Andrew? Because I'm looking at the price hmm. point. I'm looking at there maybe 
the, their uniqueness. I'm also finding the manufacturers. Now, why is that helpful? Because it's, it's going to help you ultimately make your list of companies you're going to be licensing or selling your idea to. And as you say, Stephen, a lot of times you'll see certain industries, like it's a medical product, it has certain colors, it's represented a certain way, has certain type of marketing. You know, if it's a barbecue product, it has other colors and different words. And, and you can actually steal some of the marketing copy. Like, if there's something somewhat similar, you're like, ooh, I like that one line, I'm going to take that and change it up a little bit. For my product, so a lot of times when you're making your marketing presentation, it's very similar to a lot of these other products, and you're just tweaking like 20 or 30 percent of your pitch, your advertisement to the companies with okay. the, the change. Okay. Um, so okay. it, it's like it's like Stephen, you're so right. Like if you don't do this at the beginning, so many things you do later are going to be wrong or 50 percent off. Or okay. I but, mean, uh, my God, but, and, but, and the but, patent but, search but, is not the first thing. Okay, but so. But I've been told that the first thing I should do is run out, and if I got an idea, I should run out and file a patent or, or maybe even do a prior art search. When do I do that? Well, a prior art search is a patent search, but the, the prior art search, true prior art search, is what is in the marketplace as well, which is you doing the Google image search, which should always be your first course of action. Because there's all sorts of things that have been patented but they, they, they just ran to some attorney and it doesn't even make sense. Like you say, Stephen, it's not manufacturable. So what, if you see something in the marketplace, it wouldn't be there if it wasn't manufacturable. And it wouldn't be there for more than a very short period of time if it wasn't sellable. So it tells you so much more than what's patented. So much okay, more. But, but it is important amazing. for the second step in that study of the marketplace is do a, a, do a, a a prior art search. You're just going to look for prior patents and you could go to Google Patents, play around, search around. You could even take a class at the USPTO to show you how to professionally do it. But I think it's just fun to look around and see where's the history? What have other people have done? But it's sure. just an exercise because I believe in order to create for the future, it's always important to kind of know what's happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And if you see the exact same thing, not, oh, there's variations, a lot of people stop, get very upset, very disappointed. That's, you've already been focused on this product for a while, right? That's exactly the point at which you okay. need to keep going. And you need to go, well, now I'm an expert. I spent four hours studying barbecue spatulas. I found two that are just like mine. I'm going to keep thinking of how to make some minor tweaks or changes. It's not the time to stop inventing. Now you might do that for a couple weeks, you're in the shower, it comes to you, okay. maybe it doesn't. Okay. And then you move on. But you should never move on if you find the exact same thing because you've been in that headspace for a while, you become an expert, okay. keep inventing you know, in that area. Two things, we're going to wrap this up you guys. That's the first step. It's called study the marketplace. Um, that first step is in one simple idea that you see up on the bookshelf. It's that, it's that most important first step to do. To, to, for you to become an expert in this. It's not running out and filing a patent because you're fearful or you heard someone says, look, you, know, so you need to file a patent on this right away. You don't do that. You do the first step, see what's out there, see if your product's unique, learn from others, study the marketplace, don't fall off the cliff. There you go. <laughs> I love that. All right. That's great. So the book Stephen mentions on our website, inventright.com, more about our mentoring and coaching program as well. Check that out. Down below, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. Take care, everybody. Keep inventing. We'll catch up with you next time. Bye-bye.